Hello everyone and welcome to yet another day in the world of Vera and we have an exciting update for you today. We are going to be showing off one of the most beloved archetypes in fantasy MMORPGs, the fighter archetype. And there has been a lot of work that's been done uh, in progressing this. Obviously last time we showed anything remotely fighter related, it was <clears throat> I think almost two years ago when we did our first um, basic weapon, melee weapon uh, revamp from Alpha 1. Uh, and there were a couple abilities obviously that we showed off, but nothing like the showcase we have stored for you today. You are going to get <clears throat> some pretty in-depth understanding of how this archetype has been redesigned um, and the progression that's going to be available as part of Alpha 2. And we have joining us to talk through that today two of our absolutely stellar and glorious senior designers on the combat team trad brian how are you guys doing doing pretty good here glad to be back on stream i'm doing great happy to be here happy to have you both i know you guys have put in a lot of work and and i think really representing pretty well what a lot of people who played fighters and other mmos love about the class i'm excited to chat with you about the direction you guys have taken um, and obviously, helping to make that a reality, um, feature team owner on the combat side, as well as one of our senior engineers, Keenan. How are you doing, buddy? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. Yes. And uh, now that you mentioned it, I think that, that original fighter stream was actually my, my first stream. Was it really? Yeah, I think so. Uh, I think it was. I think you're right. Yeah, that was, uh, there was a lot of work that went into kind of obviously changing the direction of, of melee and combat in general at that time. And now we have we are seeing some of the fruitful um, <clears throat> persistence in that in that direction. Um, so, one other thing I want to let you guys know is obviously we are here back again uh, in the Riverlands, and we are actually in front of Oak and Bane Keep, which is an area you guys saw at the end of the last live stream from the Commission's live stream. Um, <clears throat> and right when we ended that live stream, a story arc began in this area called an Ancient Violence. And we're going to be going in there and taking a look around. But first, I think what we should do is something that we have successfully done uh, in the past with these showcases is kind of show off each individual ability first, talk about what they do, uh, and give you guys a sense of the, of the, of the archetype and uh, the abilities available to us before we get in to combat with some, some freaky Goblin Town stuff. Um, so, do I have a volunteer today that could help tank some blows, potentially? Yeah, I'll help him. Nice, awesome, all right, very cool. Um, so, which should we start with first? What do you guys think? Um, start with Blitz. Blitz? All right, let's, let's see, Blitz is the first yeah, one let's, on let's the bar. Yeah, let's go down the bar. All right, let's do it. <clears throat> um, actually, you know what, I'm sorry. Why don't we first start with Momentum? <laughs> that sounds like a good idea, because sure. Momentum is obviously going to be referenced in Blitz. I was just looking at that, uh, and as well as a number of other abilities. <clears throat> and Momentum is essentially a class energy system. Is that right, Chad? That is correct. Talk to me um, about Momentum. Yeah, I'll go into a little more detail about that. So one thing that we feel adds a lot to just, just class identity in general is something that is beyond just an ability in this case it's a, a class or an, in this case an archetype resource uh called combat momentum so in your top left of the screen here you'll see that you've got your standard health bar and your mana bar and then a third empty bar that you'll see kind of build up in combat as we play um that you build up through all the different actions that you're doing um through the kit and you can use this resource to um uh, get passive power to your character based on which form you are in, which we'll get into it in a little bit here. Um, and you can also spend it for certain unique, um, ex especially powerful bonuses. So, and guys, just to remind everyone, obviously everything you're going to see here is still a work in progress. We are working towards Alpha 2, um, especially as it relates to the UI, as it relates to the effects. Um, and designs will change. Uh, balances will change. So keep that in mind. What we're looking for is kind of direction, right? Direction on these on this archetype. What do you think looks cool? Uh, what other what other 
fighter influences have you had in other MMOs that you think could be incorporated as well? That's all part of the discussion. Um, okay, so momentum is that class energy ability, and, and as you guys have seen, obviously other classes Trad is talking about has some similar kind of class uh, energy mechanics. Um, momentum is definitely, it looks like it is as it sounds, right? I mean, this is something that just passively is generating um, increased uh, stat bonuses, and those stat bonuses um, we'll get to in a little while how they can be applied based on some, some individual buffs. So, now that we know what momentum is, and it's good to generate that, let us talk a little bit about Blitz. What is Blitz as an ability? Yeah, uh, Blitz is your, your gap closer, your bread and butter gap closer. Uh, you pick a target, and you charge to the target. Um, there's also a spec option that interacts with the resource if you choose it um, that generates um, some combat momentum so it lets you kind of open the encounter uh, with um, a little bit of resource to start okay so i'm gonna i'm gonna charge the target directly and i'm gonna deal damage on arrival which is physical based and this spec option says that it generates 20 additional combat momentum now presumably combat momentum does not <clears throat> overflow after it hits the the maximum 100 points is that correct that's right yeah okay cool and then i see under it there is an additional um spec option that says uh killing an enemy with lethal blow will reset the cooldown of blitz so the more i kill essentially if i use lethal blow i can just keep that momentum up generating additional uh combat momentum so i can use a little bit after you know potentially landing on the target and replenish that quickly after with with uh executing lethal blow on the target as a kill and then raging blitz into the next yeah it turns you into more of a aggressive mobile character if you go with that like you're killing enemies and then you need to pick a new target he might be far away you charge to him kill him rinse and repeat cool all right let's take a look at this Ooh, nice okay that was cool and as presumably this also scales uh verticality as well Let's test it. And guys, for the purposes, obviously, of this demonstration, I've set my cooldowns to zero so that I can more repeatedly use... Uh... Oh, here we go. We got some... Kill those little mushrooms, huh? I don't want to spoil the I'll skills. I'll nuke them for you. It's a kind of, kind of stormy day with this ancient violence in the background. Oh, and by the way, we are playing for the first time in, in uh, I believe, in-game... Uh, the Renkai orcs got my trusty mohawk going on. It is probably the most appropriate uh, race class combination. <laughs> I thought so. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna try to jump. I'm gonna try to scale this thing on you. Let's see here. Oh man, now that is cool. <laughs> that was awesome. <laughs> Let me do that again. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, this is kind of a, an answer. You get to, like, that archer on the ledge that's just free shooting on you, and it's like, oh, I'm just going to get up there with you. Oh, my bad there. Let me try this one more time, one more time. Oh, very nice. Okay, so by, by default, so now, let me try this. Oh, did you just die? I think that was a, a bad nuke. My bad. <laughs> From someone. <laughs> my bad. No, no, that was for sure my bad. <laughs> That feels really good, by the way. That feels clean. Very clean. Oh, there's... Did somebody also die over here? Just a little mushroom. <laughs> oh, a little mushroom. Okay. Okay, Blitz Blitz feels really good. Well done with that. I like that. It's super smooth uh, and fluid, it feels. Um, you know, there's not really any movement interruption either on contact or at the initiation, um, which is obviously one of the most you know, ideal feeling points of any mobility skill, right, is that fluidity uh, uh, throughout. Um, okay, let's talk about the next one. So, we have Brutal Cleave. Yep, this is probably your most bread and butter AoE attack. Um, you can... It, it does a, a medium amount of damage. It's not one of your more specta uh, spectacular AoEs, but um, it's your primary AoE resource generator, so you're going to be using this a lot to build your momentum. 
Um, and you also weave this a lot between your weapon combos because your weapon attack finishers will um, reset seconds off of this cooldown. So if you're like going back and forth between cleaves and and, a, and uh, weapon attacks, you get to do more of them and have more uptime. Okay. Yeah, that's pretty cool. All right, so this does... Also, the more targets you hit, uh, so that's why it's really good in AoE situations is you get more momentum based on how many targets you're hitting. Got it. So after jumping in with Blitz, if especially if there's multiple targets, going with a Brutal Cleave is, is just going to really ramp that momentum. Um, and then it looks like also that this ability, it says, shares a cooldown with Overpower. Um... And it says also the weapon combo finisher will reduce its cooldown by eight seconds. Yep. Um, so you'll be resetting overpowers more frequently because if we want to just jump over to that one, that's the yeah. single target counterpart to this attack. Um, it's more, it's just a single target hit, um, but it is a shorter cooldown, so you can reset them more frequently. And it's also generating your resource, so it, it kind of you're choosing which one to use based on um, what you're your um, enemies are very cool that looks great by the way scott did a scott and siva have done an amazing job yeah i'm really happy with how the effects turned out like oh. making physical look this cool like you know it was a feat oh my bad okay all right, very cool. I like that. This uh, brutal cleave is awesome. Um, let's talk about Mame. Hey, let's go over here a little bit. Right here. Talk to me a little bit about Mame. Um, so this is a more powerful AOE attack in the kit. Um, do you have a spec right now for the? Uh, yeah, let me take a look range? here. Let me take. And by the way, brutal cleave. I apologize. Uh, there's no additional functionality. It looks like on brutal cleave. Uh, but we did talk also about um... overpowers on the right column. Um, it's an auto granted ability, so it's not going to be in this tree. Oh, like, got you, it. There yeah, you there go. you go. Okay, so it um, doesn't so have any spec options either. That's uh, right. But Mame does. And should I turn Mame off? Let me turn the spec option off first because this actually extends the distance of the projectile by essentially launching that piercing projectile. Is that right? Yeah, let's take a point out of that first, and then uh, we'll just kind of look at the base effect. Okay. Um, so this is just a cone in front of you. You're hitting in a cone in front of you. It's pretty heavy hitter. Um, you're not resetting the cooldown of this, so you need to be more, con uh, you know, um, uh, aware of when you're using this. But um, oh, it weird. also has the added effect of it will do more damage against recently tripped enemies. So that's where you really want to save this is if you've tripped someone um, or if someone else has tripped an enemy, you capitalize on it by basically smashing down on them with this. That looks so good. Love it. That is awesome. Okay, so let's uh, let's spec into the projectile. Now this is going to give you obviously a lot more range. Oh! Yeah, <laughs> oh! This adds a, a piercing projectile on top of the attack, so you're still getting that frontal AOE hitbox that's staying the same, but you're adding a projectile on top of it. And the cool thing here too is the projectile gets the bonus of the, the damage bonus from the trip, so you could actually combo into a target that you see trip from range um, with this as well. Um, one reason this is a spec option is some fighters won't want to be using this in a way that you know you, you don't want to pull a mob in the distance so it's just kind of an added layer of skill if you're using this in a, like a really cluttered environment um but you, it's kind of a trade-off that feels really good that is awesome I'll give myself some mana there we go um okay cool i love mame <clears throat> that is an awesome ability let's talk about uh battle cry this is definitely one of my personal favorites. Um, it doesn't do damage, but it's got some really cool effects going on with it. Um, so, do you want me to start talking about it? Or do you yeah, want to sure. use oh, it yeah, first? Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, so, I love this as an AoE opener. Um, what it does, it does a few things. One, um, it riles your allies, specifically your party members. Um, it will also apply a status effect called Shaken to your enemies. Oh. Um, 
and then it will generate a certain amount of combat momentum per ally that you riled. And then uh, just to elaborate, because people are like, what, what is Shaken? What is what is Riled? Well, uh, Shaken right now um, is a debuff on en enemies that whenever they take damage, they have a small chance to become tripped. So there's some good combos with this where like you go into like a multi hit AOE and you can capitalize on that. And then by tripping or by triggering trip status, um, that flows into MAME really well. So that's one of the combos I like to do is shout into like a, a whirlwind, which you'll see in a bit, um, into, you know, MAME to do extra damage against targets that have uh, procced that effect. Yeah, these are feeling great. Wow, I do like the, uh, the battle cry. That is like <clears throat> probably the most standard feeling like, you know, expected action on behalf of the fighter some type of battle cry effect and this one cap captures it well <coughs> i love that that's cool um okay we saw whirlwind uh back a while ago and talk to me about what's changed about whirlwind um so whirlwind is actually pretty close to what it's always been um it's it's a it's an aoe channeled attack that ramps up in speed the longer you sp you you hold it um, there's also a spec option on the right if you want to pick that that gives um, a final upward swing at the end um, that has some additional bonuses to it. Okay. Um, so let's do it without the spec first. All right, cool. So it exits out after the essentially the spinning there. Let's see. Yep. Oh, I'm out of mana. There we go. Let's try it again. Yeah, you're also able to move during it, as you're seeing here. So cool. it's, it's pretty nice to be able to just kind of, like, use this while you're moving through a pack of mobs. Got it. So let me spec now into the option that I could invest additional points into this particular skill if I wanted to give myself a finishing blow, essentially. Oh, nice. Okay. So you get a big hit at the end. Um, also, you can stop this at any time. So you're seeing him do the full channel, but if it's like, oh, I want to, you know, cancel out of it early. For, like, let's say, let's say one thing I'll do from time to time is uh, if I shake in enemies, and then this this ability is kind of good at uh, tripping enemies because it's hitting really rapidly. Um, you might see a trip, and you can cancel out of it into a main early. Um, if you want to show off that combo. Into a main. Yep. Let's do it. There you go. Oh, nice. That's cool. That feels good. Let's see. Oh, that's so cool. That's awesome. All right, cool. Uh, Whirlwind feels good, too. All right. Cataclysm is another one that we saw a while ago. What's changed with Cataclysm? Yeah, a lot has changed with this one. Um, it used to be like this big like hammer that would appear over your head, and then it hit like an AOE kind of far away from you. Overall, it ended up feeling a little awkward to use. We wanted to turn this more into like your big frontal AOE damage. So this is like the other end of the spectrum, like f stronger than MAME. Um, it's just a big ultimate like AOE attack, essentially. It's it's pretty straightforward. All right. No additional spec options here. <clears throat> and by the way, for those of you out here, you know, that are wondering about kind of how augments even though we haven't seen a lot of augment work being done, a lot of this tech is foundational in applying these types of spec options, which augments essentially are as well, but they can more radically change fundamentally what the ability is. So that whirlwind, <clears throat> you know, adding an additional component to the ability, which is that climactic, climactic whirlwind essentially, could be considered functionally as an augment, an additional effect applied to the ability. Um, okay, let us showcase that new Cataclysm. Oh, that feels much better. Yeah, that's yeah. cool. This is also another way to apply Shaken to enemies as well. Um, it and Battlecry are kind of on separate longer cooldowns, so you might find yourself sort of going back and forth between these interchangeably. And you can change the direction here mid mid wind up. Yep. 
Nice. I like that, uh, obviously, the granularity in that. Yeah, it gives you a little more agency. Like, you're not just locked in place. Because it is a full-rooted ability. You cannot move during this. But being able to turn, like, gives you a little bit more, you know, control over what happens as things might change mid-cast. Okay. Yeah, I, I totally agree. I love the, the freedom feeling there. Um, <clears throat> and that's obviously something that, you know, is, is a philosophy and a standard that's taken across a lot of the classes as it comes to, like, you know, rooted ability use and whatnot. Um, that, that freedom of agency, that movement, is core to kind of the melee experience and, and general skill usage. Um, all right, next up we have Rupture. Yep, so this is an interesting one. Um, it's a single target attack, um, and it puts a temporary debuff on your target where if they are moving um, while that effect is on them, they will build up wounded stacks. Um, we can oh we can talk about God. the we can talk about that stats effect in a moment here. Can but we at talk the end about of the it, fact that he should have like literally zero blood pressure remaining after rupturing that much blood? Oh sure, my God. We, we can build in that mechanic. <laughs> Um, but also you'll notice at the end of it, he takes a big hit of damage. Um, and the idea is that that damage will scale with how much wound they have on them. So this will have kind of some inter synergy going on with itself, but also, um, there will be other sources of wound that you could kind of synergize this with this for, uh, further for that big delayed hit at the end. Wow. Okay. Um, so the wounds, the wounds are essentially these, these stacking debuffs, um, that get applied. Um, and that's going to, you said, decrease their healing received. Correct. And also increases damage taken from all sources? Uh, from physical sources. From physical sources. Got it. Very cool. Yep. Um, and the more you build that up, because this is actually a stacking thing, um, it's not just like a single status effect. So the more you're wounding the target, um, the more and more debuffed their healing uh, incoming healing becomes so it's one of those things where if a fighter is like on your target that you're trying to keep alive you want to peel a fighter off that target because the longer they get that uptime the harder it's going to become to to heal them up that's cool <clears throat> that's awesome okay love rupture uh also love the an insane amount of blood that's happening <laughs> Um, overpower. Talk to me about overpower. What do we got here? Uh, this, we talked about this one. This was the, oh, uh, right. the resource generator. That's right. That's right. And that one doesn't have any additional spec options. The rupture also um, looks like... Did that one have spec options? Um, it, it does not. But if you go in... So you will you will see kind of to the right of rupture, there are some un, um, things that it unlocks. Um, like let's... Oh, sorry, below it, MAME, actually. If you go to MAME and then to the right, uh, there are some things over here that you get to unlock as well, which kind of synergize with, with Rupture. Um, for example, Brutality uh, allows you to start applying wound stacks through your weapon combos. So if you really want to lean into that, that oh, nice. utility, yeah. uh, it, like I'm a heal debuffing spec fighter, right? Like that's my thing that I do. You could go into this, and now your weapon attacks, in, a, in addition to generating momentum, are also applying wounds to the target. Love it. Um, oh, and then God. this one, this one adds more wound um, specialization if you go down. Mm -hmm. Oh uh, wow! Okay, so this gives overpower and brutal cleave wound application. Yeah, it's basically what it's kind of doing is it's tying your 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 wounds to the way that you're normally building momentum mm -hmm. if you want to kind of dual spec into both. That's cool. Wow, it's strong. Okay, um, let's talk about this apparent uh, crippling blow. Uh, yeah, sure. So crippling blow. This one's pretty simple. Um, this is a, a standard single target snare. Um, so. A, pretty common combo you'd use is like blitz into a crippling blow if you're like getting on top of a target that's trying to kite you um like if, if you're charging up on a ranger who's like the last thing they want is your you in their face like snaring them is gonna force them to maybe use a gap opener because they're not able to outrun you that's cool 
So, Crippling Blow is pretty strong, actually, especially when it comes to PvP. I mean, that, that that's a pretty significant reduction in movement speed. Yeah, it is it is single target, so you do have to choose wisely who you are snaring, but um, it's it's pretty nice um, to be able to just lock a target down. Not, not like hard CC, but just um, make it easier to stick on top of them. Very cool. All right, Crippling Blow, and then we have Lethal Blow. This is another one of my favorites. Uh, this is the execute of the kit. Um, it's single target as well, um, but the lower health they are, um, the harder it's going to hit. Uh, so this is this is really like you're trying to do as much damage with your other abilities as possible, and then when you get them like within that kill threshold, you're just going to hit hit them with this, hope for a crit maybe, um, and you know finish them off. Use it. There oh you go. Oh my god. This does have um, a couple spec options as well. One you kind of went over. If you kill them with that and you have the spec that resets splits, you could immediately blitz again, um, even if it was off cooldown when you got the kill. But if you want to open your skill tree here, we can yes. look at the other one. Let's talk about it. And the, uh, sorry, Crippling Blow did not have any spec options, but Lethal Blow <coughs> does. Yeah, so um, a lot of the time, you know, I've, I've played games where, you know, executes hit really hard, but you waste a lot of the damage and it kind of, it's like, oh, I saw a cool big number, but it didn't really do anything. It's kind of wasted. Um, this spec option lets you make use out of that. So it turns any overkill damage into like health and mana return to you. The oh, caster. that's awesome. And you know what I love about that? It's at least as it relates to PVP is that you do not have granularity insight to the opponent's hit points so you're really rolling the dice if you want to maximize efficacy on this consuming lethal blow yeah that's how i've been using it a lot yes. like sometimes I, I pull it off other times i don't love it that's super cool i like that interaction there okay um let's go up here we got blood fusion yeah, so um, kind of like that lethal blow spec we were using. This is another way for the um, fighter to get health and mana back to itself. That's kind of one way that the fighter sustains itself because it's it's in the thick of things, right? It's it's a primary target. Um, you've got to be in danger to be doing a lot of what your your kit does. And this is this was this is like one way the um, fighter can stay in the fight. And if you pop this, it's a big cooldown. Um, but for the next six seconds, any damage you do will have a percent returned um, as health and mana to you. Okay. So let me... Somebody nuke me for, like, 500. You go ahead, Shred. Okay. I don't want to do it all at once. Multiple 500. Like, three 500s. <laughs> there you all go. Right. And then um, I am going to deal some damage here to see how much I get back. Yep, so that last hit missed the window, um, but you got a, a good chunk from your other attacks. Um, the, the the value of this is super variable based on when you use it. So if you pop it in the right moment, you've got a lot of targets around you. You're like popping your AOEs, like this is going to get a ton more value. That's cool. I like that. So this is an insta cast that can happen in the middle of any ability activation. Right. Nice. You could, like, start your Cataclysm and then pop that right before it lands. That's cool. That is super cool. Um... Oh, yeah, I see that. Okay, very nice. And I like the uh, the effect. <laughs> effect looks great. It's got more of that blood theme. Yes. I also love the audio for it. It's like you're consuming it a bit. <laughs> All right, let me grab whatever this is. Oh, a bunch of stuff. I think that was on your corpse. I'm sorry, Brian. I didn't do that right in front of you. My it's loot. disrespectful. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, cool. Uh, let's skip Exert for now. Let's go to Lunging Assault. Yeah, so this is, like, going to be one of your first spenders of your resource. 
Um, this spender is more for mobility. Um, it's a smaller spender, um, but whenever you um, use this, you will dash forward a short distance and do an attack at the end. Um, and it's pre pretty freely usable. It doesn't have a very long cooldown. It's just spending your resource. So the more resource you're generating, the more you're able to kind of reposition and dash around the battlefield and get some extra damage out there. I see. Now, obviously, utilizing the resource with Lunging Assault, because you're dealing instances of damage to enemies that you impact, you have an opportunity, if executed, if executed well, situationally, that you can, <clears throat> you can actually probably have a net gain with this if there's a huge amount of enemies, like a train or something, right? Yeah, it would probably take a lot of enemies to actually get a, a profit, but mm -hmm. you can at least mitigate the cost uh, through that spec choice yeah. of um, if you're hitting enemies, you can you can get resource back, and therefore you're getting to do this more, and you're also not losing the value of your resource get it, that you're getting passively through your forms, which, right. again, we'll get to soon. Cool, cool. Okay, uh, let's try this. Uh, let me go. And now I don't need a target for this. I can just kind of... Nope, freely. It's a generate. reposition. <laughs> Cool. Oh, okay. So it's kind of a uh, not too far a distance there. Yeah, it's meant to like be more of a repositioner where you know you're you're dancing around your target. You might um, be zipping back and forth between different enemies in melee. Right. Um, whereas your other you have other tools for going longer distances. You have blitz. You have the next one that's about to come up um, from here. Um, so those are going to be more of your long distance um, mobility skills. All right, let me try this this more long distance mobility skill here. Talk to me about leap strike. Yeah, so this is like, this is the most uh, oh God, free look mobile at that distance. Yeah, it's it's very far and it doesn't require a target, unlike Blitz. Um, and you're also gonna basically deal damage and AOE around it. So it's just a more powerful but less frequently usable um, gap closer slash opener if you even decide to use it as an opener. Oh my God. I am the juggernaut. <laughs> oh, that was so cool. I love that. Yeah, that's a fun one to use. It's, Holy it's smokes. Definitely more, more AOE focused. <laughs> and again, guys, I am using zero cooldowns right now just so I can demonstrate the abilities. Well, I know you're all thinking like, what? This character's just going to fly around the battlefield. That's not what's happening. <laughs> Literal rocket. I know. You can actually use this too to um, go up on ledges. Like if you were to try and get up on one of these ledges we were trying earlier. Yeah. Uh, you don't even need a target to use it. <coughs> Let me just check, are there any spec options here? Uh, not currently, but there will be. All right, let me try to jump up on here. Oh, that was nice too try. short. That was too short. My bad. Oh, let me try it again. Let me try it again. Actually, in, usually I've had more success when I'm covering gaps rather than actually like trying to go up different verticalities but sometimes yeah it works Ooh, we did it we did it boys <laughs> it happened very cool all right let's talk a little bit about um you know i thought i fixed time of day but it feels like it's getting darker <laughs> i don't know um let's talk a little bit about uh Next up, these different forms that I'm seeing here. Yeah, so th these are probably the biggest con like contributors to your um, combat momentum resource. Um, you can spend momentum, but it's a resource that's primarily meant to be built up and maintained because of the bonuses that these forms provide. So if we want to just look at one of the first ones here we can go into a little more detail on how those work i'm actually gonna make it a little bit whoops my bad i want to change the time of day slightly get some better light over here there we go apologies um okay um which one am i switching to anyone you want we'll Let's get through all go to you know i am playing a renkai so ferocity sounds good 
Ooh. All right. So now you'll notice in the top left here, you, he is in this form. Um, so as long as you don't change forms, you will permanently remain in the form of uh, Ferocity. We actually renamed this recently, so you'll see Tempest there, but oh. um, that went through a rename. Um, so while in this form, uh, your momentum will increase your attack speed uh, the higher your momentum is. So for every point of momentum that you've got, your attack speed's going up, so you're, you're basically ramping up that attack speed as you generate. So I see right now I'm at 86.9. Yep. Let's generate some momentum. Your combo weapon combos are pretty good for generating momentum as well, especially your finishers. Here you go. Okay, 86.9 has gone to 99.2. Yep. Up oh, and it's dropping. Very nice. Yep. You got to stay in combat to keep the resource going. And that's really what the fighter is all about is like ramping up, being in mo that that combat momentum, hence the name. Um, and when the fights Wow, it feels cool. like and that the attack speed is even increasing each individual ability speed as well. Yep. That's huge. That is super cool. So if you were to change forms, you would lose the attack speed bonus, but immediately gain the bonus of the corresponding form. So if you want to shift me into um, maybe a form of celerity here. All right, and that is on shift V. There you go. Now oh, run nice. around. You might have to blitz him again. You probably need to get some mana and then build it up a little more, but. Oh, my bad, we have mana. But this one increases your movement speed. So this lets you just move around the battlefield a lot more um, nimbly. Um, so if you need to like you know close the gap a little bit and your gap closers are on cooldown or whatever, this is a good way of traversing the field a bit faster. Yeah. Wow. This is feel yeah. This is pretty quick. That's a significant speed boost. And then the third one is uh, more of a defensive option, a um, bit more situational, uh, but it is. Um, a disable resistance form. Uh, this is form of fluidity. And while you're in it, you are much more difficult to be CC'd. Um, so you'd be more resistant to stuns, to roots, um, trips, pretty much anything that falls into the CC you category. Try to, try to sleep me or something? Sure, I'll give it a shot. There's a chance that I'll still hit you, but let's see. I can't actually. I'm in your party. Oh, okay, no, it's okay. That's fine. All right, so this is this is basically when you want to uh, to literally be unstoppable through CC effects. Like this is going to be a 40% reduction on that. That's pretty. That's pretty powerful. Yep. And again, all the numbers are kind of in in tune or are being tuned. Um, we just when we're testing these out, we want them to feel impactful just to validate that they are you know cool things, and then we start to balance to to tone that back down. Very cool. All right. All right. Last, but most certainly not least, is an ability called God Mode. I mean, excuse me. What's it called? I'm sorry. Exert? This is, uh, this is Exert, yes. It's I just my, wanna, my earlier yeah, part. I know, your segue. Actually, it's a great segue. Yep. So speaking of balance and what will be happening, obviously, with Alpha 2 and even before Alpha 2, we'll be balancing some of this stuff. So just keep that in mind. However, segue here into God Mode, a.k.a. Exert, uh, we have what? Uh, so if we go over here to the, in, in the skill tree to the left, Exert, um, this is a very high cost, very high payoff, like essentially like super mode that you can go into and <laughs> you're yeah. you're rapidly spending your momentum while you're in uh this form it's all or nothing you can't turn it off once you pop this you will stay in this mode until your momentum is fully drained and then you're gonna have to build it all the way back up again um meanwhile you're getting increased attack speed um 
you were getting uh, CC immunity uh, and whatever else it says in here. Uh, we've I got, really we've got 20% increased attack and movement speed and immunity to disabling effects while yep, so, active. So if you can kind of draw the connection, this is like you're taking the three forms, which are CC resistance, movement speed, and attack speed, and getting just all three of them in a huge burst for a small window of time. Very small window, um, yes. Yep. And that, that small window is potentially, as it states here, at least... It would be about five seconds if you're fully, if you're fully charged up on momentum because it's it's essentially ticking at 20% per second. Is that right? Yep. Um, and and again, yeah, all the numbers ahead. are super tuned. We'll, Absolutely. Um, yes, we will yes. be tuning these numbers, but we're just kind of putting them in a place where we can play test them. And as we get more effective with these, it's like, okay, now we're seeing the ceiling of how powerful these things are. We're going to bring it back a little bit. Let's talk about um, its spec options. Yep, uh, so we've got uh, one that uh, resets your cooldowns based on how much momentum you had at activation. So if you use this at 50, you know, 50 momentum, you would uh, take about half of your cooldowns off. But if you use it at full momentum, uh, you would reset all your cooldowns. So you could just go straight into your rotation upon popping this. And then this one is uh, uh, lets it act as a CC break as well. So this, oh, okay, <clears throat> I like this. This is a nice combo. So you get increased uh, combat momentum with movement, attack speed, and the immunity to disabling effects. And it becomes a CC break on activation if you're under the effects of CC. And depending on the amount percentage-wise of momentum you have available at time of activation, potentially will reset your ability cooldowns as well. This is... This is obviously, guys, I know a lot of you out there right now are just probably going insane in chat. And I'm just going to, I'm assuming that. This is where we balance. Everything's going to be balanced, right? This is just the initial find the fun. And, and we're going to, to work around balance here. Uh, but this is a cool ability. This is literally like super, I am a fighter, hear me roar, glory. Be. Have you used it? No, I haven't gotta gotta show it yeah let's do this let's do this so i guess in order to properly do this i should actually set my cooldowns back do you have it fully spec'd i do i have it fully spec'd keenan do you have a uh, condemn on your bar and grab it real quick okay yeah that's a stun we could kind of we'll have keenan condemn you and then you'll just like break out of it after your full momentum yeah let me get some let me start generating that I love that shield effect. Oh, and you know I gotta get off this uh, form of fluidity. Let's go to... Do ferocity. Yeah, let's do ferocity. You can probably blitz him for a head start on momentum into an overpower. Keep an eye on your mana. I mean, when you're ready to be stunned. Okay, I'm almost up there. But before you stun me, let me um, let me start doing some abilities. I am feeling that wound. Wait, just don't kill him. <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm not. All oh, right, there's now a you can stun top. me. All right, stun him up. All right, use it. Oh, you don't have, did you not spec it? Oh, I thought I did. I thought I did spec it. Let's try it again. Well, let, let's check the tree. If yeah, let me, let me double check. there might be an issue there. Did I spec it? Did I spec it? I do, I do have it spec. That's weird, we didn't that used to work. Let's, let's double check, hold on. Let's try it one more time and I'll, I'll click on it this time. In case there was some finger shenanigans happening. All right, I'm ready. I think. Yeah, oh, I had an expression failure. Sad. All right, well, let's use it without that. That's That used to work. My bad. Guys, welcome to Bugs. Yep. That's okay. <clears throat> okay. Um, now it's balanced. Let's show... Yeah, now it's balanced. <laughs> See, the game wouldn't even allow that level of imbalance. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, okay, let me generate this up again. Let me get some... Uh,
Okay, I'm going to give myself some mana. And now let's use shift 2. Oh, that's cool. I love that effect. That effect looks great. Let me show the effect one more time while I'm not kind of moving around and doing stuff. <coughs> okay. And let me set my cooldowns real quick one more time. And is there... Can I give myself max uh, momentum? No. There's, an, a, there's a debug ability for it, but oh, I would just fine. say blitz into overpower and then weapon combo is the best way to do it. That's main. Uh, okay. Hit your A button. Hold still. <laughs> just, I just keep this going all the time. I got no cooldowns. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now we're cheating. <laughs> that is so good. Oh, it's so good. Very cool. All right. Well, that is a very, let me just say, I'm sorry. Let me speak. On behalf of what I assume is our audience saying, holy shit, that is a cool class. I mean, <laughs> the archetype feels great. The movement, the fluidity is there. Um, <clears throat> it feels really good just to play with these these skills. Uh, well done, guys. Well done. For Alpha 2, this is feeling nice uh, as a fighter and as melee. Obviously, that mobility is going to be king when it comes to traversing the battlefield. And, and being that juggernaut class fantasy feeling um, <clears throat> I think is really captured well here. What do you guys say we take a look at Oakenbane and kind of uh, work through that area and show people off a little bit of the world of Vera? Yep, let's put the kit to the test. Sure. Yeah, Did please. you want to talk about the weapon first? Oh or? my god, you're oh, right. Well. Thank you, yes. Okay, you guys <clears throat> obviously see here we have got a pretty beefy looking uh, sword uh, that I have equipped and Brian and the combat team have been working a lot on skill prog <coughs> skill progression trees for weapons. You saw a hint of that in its very bare bones form um, with the ranger update, but there's been a lot of work towards that weapon tree. Let's talk a little bit about it. Um, yeah. Um, so we, we've been revamping the weapon tree entirely. So the first point of progression here is we wanted to give people a choice in how long their weapon combo actually is. Um, so you've got the base weapon combo that you start with on the greatsword, which is three attacks, and you can extend that out into four attacks if you want. In addition to that, um, both the third hit and the fourth hit can have proc finisher attacks, and those proc finisher attacks can uh, trigger additional effects on you, um, such as an additional heal effect, a boost of momentary attack speed. And I'm looking a, here. I'm looking here, yep. Brian. So when I go over to the left-hand side, and it has me to kind of an option, right? I'm unlocking this node and, and selecting down one of these uh, four choices. And for those of you <clears throat> who are watching and, and perhaps don't recall the 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 use case here of these weapon skill trees, these are separate progression trees that you um, that you unlock and advance within as you are using and adventuring with a particular weapon type right Brian correct um, and and yeah they'll advance faster than your archetype tree so you'll be able to level up a couple weapons as you're as you're yes. going along yeah and uh, that's a lot of fun to do actually and, uh, yeah and, and being and that section that you're looking at now is probably the most work in progress part. Um, I, I still need to revamp this this passive section. That pr it's pretty weak overall. But um, yeah, this this version zero, um, you, you could choose between different modifications that would best fit your class. You could choose between um, a little bit of deflection bonus, um, which is a, avoidance, some, I, I think, crit damage, accuracy. So each node you're kind of choosing a different oh i see very cool yeah that's awesome yeah right right now they're all the same um, i'm gonna mix up that a little bit and make it more interesting with some some different capstone passives and such um but yeah this side's way more interesting way more fleshed out so what you just clicked on there is the first proc that you'll get access to 
um, and you have a choice between three of these things. Um, the first is Swordmaster Swiftness. This is a temporary boost of attack speed. So if, if you get this proc and then you, you can instantly use another ability or continue in your combo if you want, and it'll trigger that next ability all the, all the quicker. And to talk a little bit about, you know, obviously reiterating again kind of, you know, these proc effects, these essentially are the incentive loops for why <clears throat> weapon combo attacks, which are basic weapon attacks, are the fillers between rotational effects because you are getting, you know, as you unlock progression within these trees, you are getting substantial benefit from procs that occur by using the basic weapon combo. Right. I, I should speak on that a little bit more in like a general concept. Mm -hmm. So we want to encourage weaving between abilities and weapon combo attacks, and we're going to do that in a few different ways that you'll be seeing in this stream. Uh, the first way is archetype weapon combo interactions. You've already seen some of that where the, the finishers give you a burst of momentum, um, and overpower and brutal cleave get reduced or reset cooldowns on combo end as well. Um, the second type of interaction is weapon combo to ability proc synergies, such as direct damage on the next ability hit after a combo finisher or a status effect set up for ability use. Um, and the third version is ability to weapon combo proc synergy. So your this is deeper in the tree. Your abilities will have a chance to set up your next weapon finisher with additional effects. Very cool. That is awesome. So let's see, which one should I go for here? I'd go with the swiftness for the fighter. All right, let's do it. Effect the, duration, uh, huh? Yeah, that's actually really strong because it's a very short burst of attack speed, so the duration's really good there, and also the proc chance. I would, I'd probably max out the proc chance one in the middle, mm -hmm. and then uh, get the duration. That's probably strongest for the swiftness. All right. And now I've already gone and unlocked <clears throat> this path here of the um, extended finishers. Yeah, you could probably take some points out of the uh, extra damage nodes mm, and then I've put them into... I've never say that before. This is uh, Well, it, it's, it's only because you're getting even more damage through the procs, potentially. Okay. It's all more math and less math, right? That's mm -hmm. true. That is true. And, 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 and another thing Very here is it all depends on your build. All depends on your build, and you'll you'll see that more in this next uh, this next choice here, which is a lot more interesting. So, um, that that first one was like a kind of introdu introduction to the proc system. It's kind of a more just additive uh, extra thing. This is kind of forcing the well, not forcing the weaving, but encouraging the weaving a little bit harder. So first we've got uh, second strike. So your next um, your next ability use after a weapon combo finisher has a, an additional damage proc that occurs. And then another cho a good choice for DPS is the one right below that, which is uh, perfect timing. So the next ability you cast will have reduced cooldown. So it's kind of like, do you care about that reduced cooldown for your rotation, or do you not? And you just take the additional damage. And the third option there, unfortunately, it's not working yet. Um, this is expanding upon that status effect interaction stuff. That's what we're working on imminently, getting that built into the weapons. But whenever this is working, it'll apply burning to your target and have additional interactions for I the love mage. That. That's cool. That's awesome. And now <clears throat> you guys are starting to see, obviously, a lot of these um, these progression trees getting implemented now. Uh, and you're not just, this is not just obviously for the greatsword, but you have done this uh, in parity with the other existing weapon classes for part of A2's entrance criteria, correct? Yeah, that, that's the, one of the really cool things about our game is the amount of weapon choice that's going to be present. Um, all, all the weapons will be hopefully viable for almost every archetype um, because you can specialize it in a certain way that will benefit you and what your archetype role is. Um, so there obviously be certain things that are better for other things, like a, a two-hander is going to do a lot of damage, for instance, um, But and, and you might want to shield if you're taking a lot of the damage, but still, if, if you want to break that mold a little bit, you'll have you'll have options available. Just to expand that on that a little bit too, it's like not even just inter like, you know, archetype and weapon synergy, but also it's like you're, you're, you're building based on your expected or intended comp that you're off, 
always going to be or often going to be running it's like let's say your your yes. friend rolls a mage and it's like i want to build to uh, build with my friends so i know they are a fire mage and that's your where your burning blade example comes in like there's going to be more stuff like that so that you're just kind of playing off each other that yeah. segues really good into the next proc that we have here so this is um your ability setting up your next weapon combo so we've got three options here the first is keen edge so whenever this procs your next weapon combo will have a hundred percent chance to crit oh, the nice. next option um which if you have a bard in your party you might not want this one but it causes your next uh, ability finisher to restore some mana to yourself and then the the third one is and i'm we're not sure about where this is going to end up it might get moved over to the tank tree or the mace tree but it procs a bit of temp health on the next weapon finisher it's a pretty sweet tank option yeah that's pretty good i think i'm gonna go for the keen edge though yeah that's a solid choice all attack speed crit Yup. Yeah, I feel like I want to. Uh, I want to re. DPS beast mode. mode. <laughs> okay, I expect yeah. this app now. Very cool. That's awesome. Right, awesome. This is, yeah, this is a. Uh, I think people, you know, just the complexities that you guys are t again talking about. Like obviously, we've been talking about <clears throat> weapon skill trees and archetype design, you know, since we first were talking about ashes back in 2017 and. And now we're seeing in fruition to, you know, part of the systems that we are going to be debuting as part of Alpha 2, you guys are going to be able to get your hands on this and kind of give us that active feedback. You know, how does this, how does this level of depth and complexity grant you, the player, more granular control and choice over how your role that you're playing fits into the greater comp of the party setting, the raid setting, or solo gameplay, and your itemization selections, right? Like, all of that is a level of depth, I think, that players want to exist in space-wise, because it gives them the freedom to really define the way they're approaching this, the difficulty challenge that is the game, um, and that is combat in general. Um, that's super cool and, and especially like this breadth of options right the, the the even the horizontal choices here like that creates a a very interesting playground of rock paper scissors effects between the multitude of archetype skill progression and weapon type skill progression um <clears throat> that you're going to experience even in a pvp setting and it also is just more levers that we get to pull on the encounter design section as well uh for pve very cool well done, guys. This is a. Uh, I think I again. I speak for the community when I say. <clears throat> great progress. Very great progress. And and Alpha Two is shaping up to be not just a great testing experience, but a lot of fun. I think. Um, you know, obviously the world, yeah. and the combat design here is significant. The last thing I want to highlight is um, the the work that we've done on the animation side with the weapon combos. Mm -hmm. So if, if you actually do your weapon combo in place here, we can see it. Um, we can see whenever you get. So you get a, you got a stab hit there. Whenever you get stab hits on the third and the fourth hit, those are actually procs. So if you if you connect with the second hit of that proc hit, you'll receive the additional effects. But you actually have to connect with a monster or player to receive the effect. And I think the proc rate is at a static 25% right now. Um, we're looking at other ways to scale that, like maybe it scales with a stat, or maybe it scales with additional nodes, but right now it's kind of low. Especially if you're unlucky like Steve. I know, really, what's going on here? Come on. I'm sure we'll see it in combat. There it is. There it is. Okay. And these guys, and these guys <clears throat> we're still missing some effects that are going to help drive um, what oh, this... Oh my smoked. god, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I just was like, relentless attack. <laughs> so yeah, the, the momentum and the bonus attack speed on the greatsword stacking together oh, smoked me. That was good. Let's see. I'm so oh, sorry. You're corrupt. He's also level 15. <laughs> did I go corrupt? You did. Oh, oh boy. no. Well, it should be fine as long as we're in a party. Uh, speaking of which, we should form the party. Yes. Well, yeah, let's get this going. We can talk more while we're... Yep. Um, just, are you guys disbanded? Uh, yep. Yeah, we are. Right. Yeah, another thing we can talk about when we're moving um, is, is we did revamp the animation a little bit. Um, 
we made it work with the like the weight and of the greatsword a little bit more so you'll see like more precise pose holding and it's less of a lumbering beast than it once was we're kind of leaving that space for the mace and the axe but it's it really feels like a sword now to me it's it's awesome can i also show off <clears throat> one other thing the environment sure. team and the engineering team and keenan i think you were part of this as well obviously between the ability system and the interactable environments something that i have not seen happen really very often as part of uh as part of MMO level design, is destructible assets. We have that in and running. I want to. I want to see if I can destroy these uh, two tents here real quick. Oh, wait! Somebody else destroyed them. <laughs> I mean, they just got hit by the cone of cold. I think so. Oh, Ooh. that was good. That was hilarious. <laughs> I'll find some other tents. I'm sorry. Hold on. Let me find another one. Here we go. Don't forget to put your helmet on. Oh, should when I put my helmet on? Do I want to put the helmet on? It's a cool looking helmet. Alright, I'll put the helmet on. Let me see. Hold That's on. a cool way to solve props getting in the way. That's true. Let me Always wear a helmet. helmet. No, I, I meant you could just kill him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, if awesome. he had been wearing his helmet when you were attacking him. Oh! Love it. Oh, we need to talk to the scout first, don't we? Yeah, we should grab a quest. Oh, is there a scout over here? That's right. All right, let's clear. Okay, so you guys remember <clears throat> at the end of our commission's live stream last month, this is Oak and Bane Keep. I just kind of came up to to the entrance here. I didn't want to go inside because this story arc. Let's see if I have actually information on the story arc. Here we go. So we are we are as we are part of the. Um, the ancient violence story arc, which is an inhuman threat in the Riverlands. And so it talks about a little bit the settlers of Vera have known of a constant struggle with the goblins that overran the ancestral Kalar lands. And while we know nothing about their capabilities, <clears throat> it is important that we now find them throwing themselves at Lionhold's paltry defenses, Lionhold being one of the uh, introductory um, locations at, at right right near the portal area in the Riverlands. Um, and Captain Avon, Avon Moore needs help assessing the scope of that threat. Interesting. And we also have here what appears to be a side quest. Scout Yorin. Let's talk with Yorin. What does he have here? Once a great place of our ancestors now is overrun we shall do something about this. Alright, he's been charged with observing. I would be happy to take some of your dispensation as pay. So he wants us to kill 20 of the goblins here in Oak and Bane. We've already dispatched a few of them. Uh, Alright, accept that. Okay, we got the Ancestral Revenge. Let's do this. got going on over here? Some glint. Oh, that guy. He's just kind of, he's just kind of flipping around over there. Ooh, this is feeling moody. It's feeling moody. <laughs> Alright, not too bad. So now, of your guys' experiences in MMOs, how many of you actually mained as a fighter? Me. I think I'm the only one here. Uh, I know everyone here, here has played fighter, but I, I love playing fighters. Like, they're kind of my first choice. You know, I, I'm gonna... Oh, hold on. I see that there is a... Watch out, spirit big nearby. Oh my god. I already popped my blizzard too. I got drags here, nice. Oh yeah, this is a is this named guy? mob. It's a named mob. We'll have to be sure to loot him after we kill him. Yeah, Steven needs to loot him, not anyone else. <laughs> Why are you guys saying that? 
<laughs> yeah, it's almost like something happened. Yeah, we don't have any like ninja looters in this group for sure. Now some of you guys are seeing that the effects of that big explosion. That is still effects that are, are being authored right now, but that is specifically a progression. Oh, that guy was pretty strong. That is specifically a status progression, is that right? Which one? The... Oh, I got something. Wait, wait, wait. Okay, yeah, there you go. I got something? I got some... Looked like a... Let me see if I can find that. Hold on. What do we got here? A toy soldier legs. Legs of an ancient toy soldier that survived well past when it ought to have thanks to ancient magics within. Can be reassembled with other pieces. Okay, cool. Um so sorry, I was talking I was talking about the uh, conflagrate. Yeah, uh, so one thing you'll be noticing a lot on the mage is um I'm throwing out different elements of projectiles, like here's a fireball, and then after that you'll see my weapon combo is throwing out little fire projectiles. As we showed in the previous Mage livestream, that is Elemental Empowerment and how it works. However, we've changed a little bit how that works. Um, now, it, on the finisher attack of every combo, um, you get the element based on what your infused element is. And then you can use certain abilities to promote that from burning to like conflagrate in the case that you're seeing Oh my here. god. That was a lot. So you'll see me doing that here mana. and there. I need to give myself some mana. Yeah, and that's a concept that we're applying to all the classes. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. on, on the tank we recently moved, they used to generate courage uh, and uh, apply stagger on every hit. We moved that all to the combo end as well, which is really nice because that allows us to normalize these effects across multiple different weapon types and really make true our promise of weapon choice. Yeah, it's like we don't want to, you know, put too much emphasis on attack speed for proc rate. And, you know, there's other ways to do that. You can normalize chance and all that stuff, but... We also just thought, like, from a gameplay perspective, it is really cool to, like, make you have to commit to that final hit. It just kind of makes it feel a little bit more um, like you're working towards something rather than just getting something on every attack. Yeah. The initial thought was that the additional flexibility was good with the tank play style, but having that additional thing to chase mid-rotation um, is turning out pretty well. I found, we got here. <laughs> I found this dude. Looks like some. Oh, this is a. Uh, this is. We saw this guy before. He was in our. Um, last time we showed Oak and Bane Keep. An armored shade floats before you, incapable of speech. It, however, does extend a translucent arm to hand you a corporeal letter. Oh, I've received a letter. Okay, let's take a look at what this letter does. The paper in this letter is inked on what feels so old that it could disintegrate. Against time and your gentle handling, it holds together. That sounds like I should open this letter. Though the letter is ancient, the text in it is clearly legible. Papa. Oh, no, wait, no. Papa. Mama says we won't be able to visit anymore after we've through the portal. Oh, shit, I messed that up. <laughs> I should have read this before. C minus. I know, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Okay, wait, wait. Papa. Mama says we won't be able to visit anymore after we leave through the portal. Didn't feel right to leave you alone, so I'm leaving you my bravest toy soldier. Oh, that was the toy soldier piece we found to help you and the others here fight off the demons coming for us. I hate to tell you, kid, I don't think that toy soldier's gonna help. <laughs> I'm getting too old don't for toys. I, I know, I know. His name is Troy. Oh, I love always Troy. We have respawns here. The word Og is written in blood across the back of the paper four distinct times. Sounds interesting. Oh. It's going to give me some experience. Deliver the toy to the Forgotten Soldier's memorial site. Okay, so we need to find a memorial site. Oh, that's sad. What history? What history lives here? I love the banners. Oh, 
Oh man. We've got a. I love the. I also love the ambience here of the like goblins. <laughs> We're mopping these goblins up. Oh yeah. Yeah, we've been doing a lot of playtest cycles in this area, getting it, getting it good. So we're pretty experienced. Yeah, we have had many deaths in this area, but uh, yeah, what kills you gets you stronger, right? Yep. I think that's how it goes. That wasn't close. No. <clears throat> Guys, I want to talk about a little another thing that we always are keeping in mind towards um, Alpha 2. Oops. Um, keeping in mind towards Alpha 2 is performance testing. That's something that PI has been helping us test, and there's another PI test happening, I think, next week, um, which is both the uh, visual performance that you're seeing <clears throat> within the game world uh, from a rendering perspective as well as from a networking perspective um, on the servers as well. So uh, keep that in mind. There's going to be a lot of benefits there uh, because um, it is something that uh, is happening now, and teams have been putting a lot of work towards that. Might want to get a little mana back there. I know, I have no mana. I'm so sorry. I'm just grabbing, cheating, grabbing mana. We need a we need a bard in this party. <laughs> well, you do have blood fusion if you so choose. Oh, that's right. I forgot about blood fusion. I should choose that. Yeah, next AoE pack, you could use that with a... So that gives 50% back of damage done as mana? Yep, so round all these guys up and pop it and start AoEing. Oh yeah, good call. Forgot about that. Nice. By the way, this area looks great during the uh, ancient violence. All right, it looks like we got something up here on our right. Wolves up front, let's get them. Let's do this. What do we got? Incoming. Looks like we got Alpha Wolf up top. Okay. Try to down. <laughs> I see this Alpha Wolf up there. I'm going for him. Who's Alpha? Who's this guy talking about Alpha? player on me. Okay, I'm getting that mana back. Oh, what do we got here? Player? Yeah, he's dead though. Thanks. Alpha? Yeah, let's loot him. Where's he at? Right here. <clears throat> he has an alpha severed head. Alright. Alright, like crafting material. <clears throat> they have like a little den here. How sad. Let's go behind the den, maybe. Sneak in. Yeah, come around from the, kind of like the wall side. Infiltration. We need a camouflage. Should we go up here? Mm, go along the, the wall walls. Connect. Let's try it. I think there's mobs up there too, but we can give it a shot. Nah, it looks like there's a break in the wall. Okay. Further down. Oh yeah, there's a flare up there too, be careful. That's a good plan though. Boiled. Okay, here we go. Yep. Alright, sleeping. 
okay. to jump on them. Hold up. Oh! <laughs> Get some damage. Got a trip there. You're doing it. Incoming from oh, the back. We got, yep. another, we got a friend. Oh no, he's hurting. He's hurting. Alright, he's frozen. Dead. Got him! <clears throat> I feel bad for the, for the um, wolves, actually. Like, they didn't want this. <laughs> They're just in their little dens. Oh, wrong, wrong place, wrong time. These dens smell nasty. Hey, Nick Pull. Nick Pull? Well, I guess that's every pull in here. I was yeah. about to say. <laughs> Fighter's doing work, though. Yeah, I'm doing some big work pulls, here. Big pulls are what fighter is uh, all about. Sell out. Alright, doing a sleep again. Gonna focus the shaman over here. I love getting that mana back. Nicely done. Okay. Get up here. There's a goblin right there. Ooh, it's getting dark for me. Oh, we Back pulled a bunch here. here. Pulled a bunch. Mm-hmm. Player in the back. <laughs> There's a shaman out there too. Destroy their homes so they don't come back. It'd be cool if that worked. <laughs> Found some of the, uh, the cargo. Okay, yeah, I picked up a. Uh, a Got some loot. Yeah. All right, sleeping that pack up there. Next pack, actually. Alright, Aileen. Rags ad. Oh yeah, we got a named guy. That's one oh. of the ones we need. Look up. Where is he? Uh, he is right on top of our tank. Show him back here. Got another sleep off. Yeah, sure move. Yeah, me too. All right, bringing that wolf down. Gonna we did it. Mana here, real quick. Alright, let's okay, start. I got Pressing. some Howling Wolf Garb. Nice. nice. And I found a Toy Soldier Arm. We have the we have the arms now and the uh, boots. We're doing Sweet. it. Sweet. Halfway. Perfect. Whoa. <laughs> Every time, sorry. Every time. <laughs> Got uh, ads from the left. 
He's asleep. Careful uh, to the left here. Try and pull him back. Oh. Budge, budge over here. Let's rest up. All right, let's make sure there's no ads over here to our right. Jump, jump. See where the wall kind of sticks out back there? I think we need to oh, go yeah. that mm -hmm. far. Right, wolf right here. It's patrolling. Let's kill him. Uh, we got ads. Okay. Oh, no. let's, just, let's just go to the wall. Go to the spot. Okay. All right, I'm going to sleep him as we pull. All right, sleep dropping now. I think that LOS to me. A lot of wolves just passed that, so if we end up having to move a little bit, don't go any further than this. Yeah, drag him into the corner. Alright, this flare's down. My favorite place of any tank, a corner. <laughs> Wait, I might pull cool down. I'll bring him back. All right, it's just him now. Burn him. I'm bringing it back to the wall. Nice. Good pull. That shield is strong. Back. Here we go. Wait for it. I wonder if those uh, wound stacks are reducing the shields, though. It should be. Oh, there's a trip. Can you maim him? Maimed him. Nice. Come on, get him. Get him. Get that shield down. What a clutch. 95. Unbelievable, that I shield. Know. It's almost like it's, it's scripted to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Oh sweet, he had a goblin skull. Sweet. Very nice. Alright. Now what what were we <laughs> were we looking for something? Yeah, uh so I think in here is gonna be the last two goblins we're trying to find. Yeah, they are up this ramp this way, I think. Watch out, there's both left mm -hmm. and right here. I was trying to thread the needle and uh, uh, both. Sleeping the Shaman. Focus on this pack here. Oh, you just destroyed that tent. Heck yeah. I'm telling you, if you destroy the homes, they won't come back. Mm hmm. Ooh, I'm on the Shaman. Freezing in. Alright. Careful up here. This is like super danger area. I'm gonna pull some of these back, I think. Yeah, you could probably, yeah. Nice sleeping in the flare. We got the other player too now. Oh, got him knocked down. What's happening? All right, keep an eye off. Lags. Him. He's right there on the left. He's pathing. Just gonna right, wait it out. 
We want to clear up here. <laughs> the slag's the last boss. There's a flare there? above us. Flare right clear here. Clear to the pull. right while we wait, and yeah. then pull him while we're. Oh. Okay, they're pulled. <laughs> Leave this one oh. that's close to us, Trad. Yeah, I'm waiting to round them up, because they're, they're oh, all coming. We also got the next. Yeah, path. they're all coming. All right, sleep dropping now. Drop that sleep. Oh, oh my god. Uh, it's not much use if that happens. Two can spin at the this. Clutch res. They, they bumped my first one, second uh -huh. one coming. Okay. Keep kiting, keep kiting. I'm back Look out. Up. Stable. Kiting. You got more. Good kill on the chamois. Nice. We're doing it. All right, did we loot slags? Cool. Oh, yeah, got to loot him. I certainly Ooh. did. What? Did oh. you? Did you loot slag? <laughs> Dude. Tra trade with me. No, no, trade it to me. Trade no, you, you, you. That's not a tradable item. Uh. He'll be back soon. Okay. Maybe we can, uh... Yeah, let's move up. Maybe in the we meantime. can spawn him. What if he wants to bring him in? I think his respawn isn't too bad. It's actually <laughs> pretty quick. Is it? Like, yeah. Yeah. Alright, well let's talk about how this fighter has been performing. Exemplary performance by the fighter, if I don't say so myself. I mean, really. Mm -hmm. Just unbelievable. Top tier. <laughs> Top tier. I do love the area. I, I love how each of the areas just dramatically change as story arcs come online visually, right? The atmospherics alone are significant. Not not to mention the obvious sound ambience, everything. I mean, it's these goblins. I love their vocals. Yeah, the little evil laugh like the big guys do right before they spin the win on you. Oh, yeah. It's a nice, like, audio telegraph, too. Alright, gonna freeze the player. They're starting to respawn here. Back is back. Who is? The main guy? Back. No, this oh, back over here. So what are some of the things, Trad, that you look for from the community or Keenan or Brian as it relates to kind of everything we talked about today, right? What are, what are the things you want to hear people kind of opining on in our different social media forums and whatnot on Discord. Oh, I mean, incoming slags. Oh, well, yeah. let's get him first, then we can chat about that. Oof. Uh, I mean, this is this is actually an interesting one, is like, you know, just these areas, like, you know, the the density, the respawn rates, like, you know, this is, this is intended for a larger group, but is this the kind of um, farming um that you would want to see uh or you know what 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 are your preferred you know grinding experiences in games um from mmos you've played 
Um, also, just like how do you feel the fighter plays from the melee perspective? Like, you know, what are fighters that you've really liked playing in games? Um, and how did you enjoy them more, or, or what do you like that more that you're seeing here that you didn't see in fighters on other games? Like all that kind of stuff. Yeah, what, one building on that a bit. One thing I really like is um, criticism from our fans. Like what, like what's missing? What doesn't look so hot? Um, we're all experienced developers. We could take the heat. It's fine. You're not gonna hurt our feelings. We just need to know what sucks. Yeah, um, absolutely. That's... I think the <clears throat> critical feedback loop is very important. I think you know one of the things that is super important anytime you're offering any critical feedback is is to be very specific in the things that don't mesh well or you know that you're looking to see improved and a lot of that stuff validates already what we have you know intentions for as we move forward in development but um that validation is important right because it means that you as the player are thinking about the same things that we're thinking about um and and we can prioritize that stuff obviously combat being one of the biggest takeaways from alpha one which you can see here we took to heart and are iterating upon uh, and continuing to develop it. Another good thing would be, um, you know, this is a, a half group, like how how do the visuals look? Like, you know, the, the fighter effects feel and look really awesome in my opinion, um, especially when we're showcasing them. How does that hold up, you know, with the mage effects in parallel and, and also the cleric and the tank, like a lot of that stuff, you know, I, how does it look you know when, when you're looking at it from an, a, a very controlled isolated standpoint and how does that hold up or break down when you enter all those archetypes together into the mix we ready for the final guy Ooh, well, slags. 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 Did, I the, uh, sorry, did i loot the other dude i ready. looted him again so i spawned us a new one uh, oh <laughs> my <Jesus>. god <laughs> I can't help it. where is the new one Right here. <laughs> Years of ninja looting experience, I oh guess. Oh my Gee. god. This is the fighter showcase, not the rogue. <laughs> uh, sorry. That was funny. Is this him? Alright. Yes. Let me Watch Keenan just loot it again. Oh my god. I know. There we go. Okay. We have the flare blade fragment and the toy soldier torso. Yay. We have the torso now. Keenan has two torsos. I have a single torso. <laughs> <laughs> I have three. Oh my god. <laughs> okay. Right, when you guys are ready, I'm gonna charge. What do I do here? What you want do me to do on? a sleep bowl? Uh, well, they're incoming. All right, Fine I'm bowl. sleeping now, so we'll see which one I start get. There are two shamans in the back. I'm gonna focus on them. I'm up here on the platform. You want, buddy? Let's go. Oh, he's trip. Um, I think with the fighter looking as cool and spectacular as he does, it's a good opportunity to talk about how That's how cool. like visually interesting each ability should be and whether people think it's too much or too little uh, or whether they feel like it's about right for the gameplay experience that they enjoy. Absolutely, visuals. <clears throat> the, uh, the visual effects for these abilities are in a um, uh, playable uh, state. We want to get your guys' feedback on that. Uh, you know. Definitely want a lot of feedback around um, what people want out of group grinding areas. I know we're developing a lot of those right now, and that would, that would make sure that we're giving everyone what they want, or at least taking it into consideration with what we're building. Like things like respawn rates, density. 
Uh, do we want to complete the quest here? Yeah, you should have all the that. pieces. All right, so in your inventory, you should have all four if you looted Zags. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, put it together and see what happens. Oh, just right-clicking one of them? Sure. Oh, reassemble the doll! The goblins must have broken up the toy soldier. If I have all four parts, I can try reassembling it. Looks like there's they something over together. here. They together. I have a reanimated toy soldier. That sounds like a Chucky doll or something. <laughs> Creepy. Let's introduced... get rid of it. Yeah, I was about to We're say. We're gonna get respawned. <laughs> better, better turn it in. Where are we yeah. going? Where are we going? We got a tombstone from from the same guy. Ooh, the Forlorn Heroes Memorial. Let me see here. We have a memorial for all the heroes that could not be buried. And you will always be remembered here. I placed the action figure by the memorial. I can feel a grateful presence in the air. I suddenly notice this. Hey, this was a this is a graceful, graceful. The goblins don't seem small, to care. <laughs> small parcel near the memorial that I didn't see before. <gasps> he gave me a glowing glint and some dim glint, and he had yep. leftover currency from the ancient times. And hopefully a lot of XP, right? Yes, a significant number of experience. Delivered the toy. We have succeeded. Yay. Look at that. It happened. We did it. Amazing. Holy smokes. Well, that was fun. I enjoyed that. And the area obviously looks beautiful. The class plays remarkably well. Um, feels very good. Um, Keenan, Brian, Trad. And all the goblins around us that are incredibly vocal. Um, thank you guys. This was a lot of fun. I enjoyed this. I know the community did. Um, everyone out there in the community, as you guys have seen, uh, the fighter class is is getting very close to ready for Alpha 2, along with all the other archetypes that you've that you've seen. Give us your commentary. Give us your feedback. Talk on the YouTube channel, in the Discord, on our forums. <coughs> what did you enjoy about the presentation? Uh, today, oh my gosh, these guys are just completely. Maybe we can just do persistent. Yeah, I was gonna say maybe just nuke them as they come. Yeah. They're almost um, dead. We'll nuke any future goblins. Yes, future goblins. But um, everyone out there, talk to us about what you enjoyed today in the presentation. Um, we obviously enjoy sharing these updates with you. Obviously, Ashes of Creation is still a work in progress. We are continuing to develop towards Alpha 2. Uh, we are hard at work doing so. Uh, but the combat team loves your guys' feedback, uh, so please give it. And uh, Keenan, Trad, uh, Brian, thank you very much for joining us today and showing off all the hard work that your guys' teams have been working on. Yep. Yep, thanks for having us. It's been an adventure. Yes, it's my pleasure. An adventure. All right, guys, we will see you back on stream.